Greetings from Chess.com. I am very excited to cover the profile of India's 13th Grandmaster Deepan Chakravarti. So happy birthday to Deepan Anna. I have covered his win over Hikaru Nakamura on the channel. He was also there with us in the Chessophile show where you get to know the funny side of Deepan Anna. He's answered a lot of questions there. I would definitely suggest you to watch that episode uh, featuring Deepan Chakravarti and Stanny. Coming back to the Know Your Gym video. I sent him a list of questions he answered them all and also sent uh, his best games we'll come to his best games they are amazing for now let's focus on his accomplishments uh, he got his grandmaster title which he considers as one of the major accomplishments but he's also won a lot of events so it's hard to pick one but he has picked uh, the the uh, the events pertaining to nationals so he has come second in a lot of national events and is also a national sub junior champion and asian junior champion and then i asked him about his favorite opening he feels it's difficult to pick one but he still went with cecil and knight of his favorite chess piece is a king and uh, his favorite books uh, as i mentioned below as tuesdays with mori power of subconscious mind and pony and selvan by kalki krishnamurti so I've read the first book uh, very thoroughly. Uh, the second book I've heard of it, but the first book is uh, is a nice one. It's written by Mitch Albom. I would definitely suggest you all to read it as well. And when it comes to favorite movies, The Dark Knights, The Goodfellas, and uh, Thevar Magan are his three top choices. All right, I think now it's time to focus on the chess side and uh, let me get the games. So the first game that we are going to take a look at is his game over Deep Sen Gupta, a strong grandmaster from Kolkata. And uh, Deepan Chakravarti was white. One of the uh, main strengths of Deepan Chakravarti is that he's very flexible with his openings. Uh, he has played d4, c4, e4, g3, knight f3, b3. You name it, he's played them all in his career. And uh, this game features uh, c4. So after c4, e6, g3, d5, bg2, knight f6, knight f3, here Deepan Chakravarti plays d4. And in this position, castling is quite normal, but Deepan Chakravarti goes for b4 and gives it a benko like favor, uh, flavor if you see it colors reversed. And then after a5, he goes b5, and after c5, he plays e3, knight d7, castles, bishop d6. Now in this position, uh, take a moment to see what you would do as white. Because black is giving a pawn, is it safe to take it? All right. So in this position, he played. He takes d4, and after c takes d4, he captures a pawn on d4. If you also consider this move and you have chosen it, congratulations. But the point is to uh, go one move deeper and see what happens if black plays bishop e5. Because if you go bishop b2 in this position, black can go queen b6, and it's not easy to uh, untangle. The spin is uh, quite annoying. So in this position, after knight d4, bishop e5, Deepan Chakravarti had seen a fascinating concept beforehand and he executed it with ease. He played knight c6. Now he's attacking the queen and bishop. Uh, yes, the rook on even is also hanging, but he has to pay attention to the fact that the queen is now attacked. So bc6 makes sense and his opponent did that. And then he plays d4. This was the point behind capturing the, the pawn on d4. So now it's a full piece sacrifice, but Deepan feels that he will get a lot of pawns in return, a strong center, and an initiative. So in this position, after d4, his opponent Deep Sen Gupta played bishop to c7, and then after bishop into c6, uh, the rook on a8 is attacked, so he moved it. And now again, a very good question. This is a question that I often ask my students, um, especially the beginners. What is one thing you're supposed to do when your opponent hasn't castled? The answer is you must look for ways to lock up that king in the center and prevent any attempt of theirs to castle. Given a chance, black would love to castle in this position. Considering that, I have a feeling that you now know which move to make. The move is bishop to a3 and now Castling is stopped. So now what started as a fascinating peace sacrifice is now culminating into an attack against the uncastled king. After bishop a3, bishop b7, he develops his piece with the knight to c3 and uh, the black king feels stuck. The knight cannot move, the queen cannot really come to e7, 
This knight on f6 doesn't have any goal as such and this rook is simply defending the bishop. So you see that black's piece orientation is quite clumsy and in this position after knight c3, Dips and Gupta tried to make it work through some creative ideas like h5 but white is clearly better and uh, he just had this initiative and did not give any chance to his opponent. I would suggest that you take a pause here and see what you would do as white. Okay, if you chose queen e2 or rook e1, congrats, I think these are very good moves. Deep Sen Gupta, uh, uh, after h5, Deepan Chakravarti played rook e1 and then Deep Sen Gupta played h4. And in this position, um, here Deepan Chakravarti threatens a checkmate with queen d3. The idea is that he wants to capture rook takes e6 and if you take back fe6, there is queen g6 mate. In order to prevent this idea, Dipsen Gupta played rook h6 because now he is guarding the g6 square. In this position, Deepan Chakravarti went all in and created another threat, again a mating threat with queen f5. And now the idea is to play rook takes e6 directly. Black cannot defend that point with knight f8 because of the pin and even if you play bishop into c6, there is rook e6. So the only way to prevent uh, rook takes e6 is to move this knight. And if you go with the knight to h7, white has the pawn break in the center with d5. In the game, Deep Sen Gupta played knight g4 and here Deepan simply picked up the piece and after h g3, h g3, g5, he got in knight to d5. Now after bishop into c6, bc6, knight f8, he plunges in with bishop e7 and after queen c8, he simply picks up the pawn on g5. And uh, you, you can see that e5 is simply too dangerous because the rook is just uh, in, in that line. So in this position after uh, queen g5, his opponent played rook g6. I invite you here to find the finishing touch and see if you are able to find the correct move. In this position, the best move is knight to f6 check. The point being that if you take king takes e7, there is a knight g8 check and then there is a mate on c5 or there is a mate on e7. So yeah, after knight f6 check, Deep Singh Gupta resigned. So that's how um, Deepan won this game. This happened in Kolkata Open 2018. I have another game to show you. Uh, again, a very fascinating concept uh, which can be, you know, uh, which can easily go into uh, a textbook of attack and play. Uh, I'm going slightly uh, directly to the. I'm going directly to the critical position after knight c3, b c3, queen d7. In this position, bishop c2, knight a5 puts his bishop to g5, and after bishop a3, he plays knight h4, and after bishop into c2, queen takes c2. In this position, um, Parimarjan Negi was black and Deepan Chakravarti is white. Parimarjan played his queen to g4. The point is that he's attacking this bishop on g5. Again, it's a good moment to see what you would do as white. I'll give you three options. Do you want to play queen to f5 to exchange the queen? Do you want to play knight f3 to uh, support this bishop? Or do you want to play pawn to f4? In this position, Grandmaster Deepan Chakravarti played pawn to f4. But you can also go queen f5 uh, in this position or knight f3. Here, Deepan Chakravarti played f4. And for a moment it might seem that it's a mistake because this bishop is uh, locked up there. It cannot come to these squares because they are all covered. So here Parimar Janegi just played h6 and is asking this question, where will the bishop go to? But here comes the concept. Take a moment to see what you would do as white. Okay, so the point of uh, f4 was on h6 to play bishop f6. And now uh, h3 is threatened and the knight f5 is also coming and this pawn on g7 suddenly lacks defense. In this position if you take g takes f6, the point is to play knight f5 attacking the h6 point and, uh, and then the rook is also joining the game. So in this position after knight f5 Parimarjan played king to h8 and then after rook lift to e3 he played knight c4. And then now he, swim, he simply put his rook to h3, he's now threatening rook h6, he's threatening knight h6 and then to combat that Parimachan played h5 and here you can see that the knight and rook are already doing uh, quite a lot of uh, action on the king side. He now brings an additional piece into the attack with rook f1 
and then this rook will join the attack with rook g3. So after rook f1, Parimajan gave up his piece with knight d2, and after queen takes d2, queen takes f5, you can see the point as to why he decided to take on d2 because there are no pieces left to defend the pawn on h5. So he simply attacked it with queen e2, and then there's just no defense. White is winning here. After queen e2, he played king g8, but after rook takes h5, queen e4, he played rook f3. You can't take the queen because of rook g3, and then after queen g4, just mate on the next move. So here, Parimajan played queen b1 check, and after queen f1, queen g6, he picked up the queen with rook g3. And it's not just that the initiative is still very much consistent. After king g7, he played f5, the black king is still in danger. And after a few moves, the deep and check to g1. So let me take you through the final moments. He played queen e5, and after bishop d6, he played queen g7, king takes f5, queen f7. And now on the next move, black is also losing the rook. For example, if you play king e4, there is a mate. And if you play king g5, you just give a check and pick up the rook. So those were two fascinating games of Deepan. And uh, you saw how he was able to conduct a great attack in both the games. Uh, I would again suggest that you also watch his game, uh, his win over Hikaru Nakamura, which I have covered in the channel. I'll put it in the description as well as check the Chessophile show episode. Again, join me in wishing Deepan Chakravarti a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Anna. Wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. I would also like to tell the viewers that when I asked him about, you know, his best results, he said that the best is yet to come. And uh, I really like that approach. And I am personally very curious to see how he does in his next tournaments. All right, guys. And uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you're here for the first time, do subscribe to our channel and uh, do hit the like button. It helps in reaching a lot of chess lovers. I'll be back with another video soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.